And I have to say, in the past couple of days, the news has become more and more worrisome in terms of the direction of Hurricane Lane, both in terms of strength and the northerly direction of the hurricane. Um, some of the good news is it was a five last night. It's dropped back down to a four, but a high four with winds up to 150 miles per hour. And the direction continues to track north. And in the most recent update, a little closer to the islands, not a lot, but a little closer to the islands and moving slowly. So the effects of this hurricane as it passes the island of Oahu could last longer than one that just moves by quickly, like Hector. And so the rain will be heavy and longer. The wind will be longer in duration. And we could have coastal flooding that lasts longer because of the winds that are whipping from the south and hitting the south shore. And so we're planning for the worst and hoping for the best. And some people may say we're overreacting, um, that perhaps we should hold back and not make decisions. But the last thing we want to do is wait to the last minute and then have the public out on the roads, at work or in schools, trying to get home when it becomes dangerous. And we never want to do that. So we're taking a lot of precaution and we're using an abundance of caution as we go forward. But we do have a lot of major announcements. We have a lot of the stakeholders here, our first responders and others. We're going to ask them to say a few words too. But we're going to start feeling the impacts here on Oahu from Hurricane Lane in about 48 hours. And at some point, we're going to be put probably on a, on a hurricane watch. Right, Hero? Warning. warning, excuse me, warning. And that's when it becomes really serious. We're on a watch now. When you go into warning, it's become serious. We will be discussing whether we set off our sirens to let people know, not maybe immediately, but as it gets closer, as you get more information, so people will be paying a close attention to all of you in terms of what they need to do. Um, and we'll be looking at things, voluntary evacuations, maybe in mandatory evacuations, should we see, see major coastal flooding, for example. And we're going to wait and see how that plays out. Um, but we do have some major announcements. So one is we're asking our city workers um, to not come to work tomorrow unless they're a disaster response worker. Those are critical people. Those are the guys here, our first responders. They need to come to work. They're disaster response workers. And it's interesting, there's a lot of folks like that, people you wouldn't think about initially, but you think a little bit and you say, I could see why they're important too. And then there's disaster support workers. That's everyone else. And that's probably the majority of the 10,000 employees we have here at the city and county of Honolulu. But they could be called to work. They could be asked to go to one of the shelters we're going to be opening up to assist. So they need to be on standby also. So starting tomorrow, if you're a disaster response worker for the city and county of Honolulu, you must come to work. Starting tomorrow, if you're a disaster support worker, you do not come to work unless you're requested to show up at a shelter or somewhere else by your director. And that is critically important. Now, at the same time, as you know, the Department of Education has canceled all public schools here on the island of Oahu, which makes a lot of sense for our keiki. But also, given the fact that our keiki are at home, many of our city workers will be at home with their keiki, making sure they're safe. So it goes hand in hand. And this decision was made in close coordination with Governor Ige and the Department of Education in, in levels I've not seen before, starting yesterday. And I really appreciate the level of cooperation we're receiving not only by the federal government, but by the state government and the city and county of Honolulu and our sister counties. We're all talking to each other. Um, some other things that are, that are really critical. Um, the bus is used by about, we have about 200 and what, 25,000 rides every day? Is that correct? Correct. Correct. And people use it to get to and from work, uh, to get to the doctor and other places. But we do not want people out on the streets as Hurricane Lane approaches. So starting on Thursday, the last bus trip, last handy van trip, will be at 6 o'clock in the evening, Thursday. And after that, there will be no bus service on a regular basis until after Hurricane Lane passes. So that's going to mean Friday. It could mean Saturday. We're going to watch how long Hurricane lingers by, Hurricane Lane lingers by. If, for some reason, it moves quicker, we'll start re-implementing bus service. However... For those folks who use the handy van, um, who need critical medical appoint need to get to critical medical appointments or dialysis after six in the evening because people do need that, 
we will ask them to call our handy van reservations and we'll attempt to see if we can accommodate you. But this is on a case by case basis. Um, Opala pickup, garbage pickup. We don't want people putting their green bins, gray bins, blue bins out on the street and having them blown around by Hurricane Lane. So starting on Friday, we will discontinue the pickup of gray bins, blue bins, green, and, uh, and, and, and green bins. Um, and on bulky pickup, we'll not pick it up after Thursday. So up till Thursday, we'll continue to pick up Opala both in bins and bulky item. And after that, people are to take their bins and secure them so they don't blow around. And if they have bulky item products out on the street, they need to bring them back onto their site so they don't blow around. Also, our convenience centers and transfer stations will be shut down. Um, all of our public parks will be shut down starting tomorrow morning. No, no public parks for the city and county of Honolulu will be open. This is particularly important at our beach parks, where we don't want to encourage people to go into the water, given the very, very high surf, we could see waves as high as 20 feet. But it's not just the height, it's the amount of water that's moving through. We're going to also have high tides at the same time, strong currents. It's going to be difficult to stay in place, even if you're trying to paddle out to where the, the perfect place to catch the waves are. And only the most experienced people should be in the water, and really no one should be in the water at this point. Um, we're going to be shutting down our zoo and golf courses starting Thursday, reopening probably on Sunday. We'll play it by ear and see how the hurricane impacts all of us. We are asking people to continue to call in if they see debris in streams. We'll try to get people out to as many places as we can to continue to clear streams until it's no longer safe to be out there. And the best way to do that is by calling 768-CITY and um, we will then try to respond where we can. And 768 City is also 768 7890. 7690. That's the streams. Okay. Um, we've also created a special link. Uh, DIT has created a special link for Hurricane Lane. You go to honolulu.gov and um, you can get information, and you can also sign up for hnl.info. We ask everyone to sign up for that to get the most recent, most late-breaking news. Before I turn it over to some of our other folks in this room, I do want to emphasize that we do not want to see what happened in Puerto Rico. And we do that by making sure we're prepared. And it starts with every one of the residents on this island to make absolutely certain that they have their hurricane kit, they have 14 days of food and water, that they're working with their family and neighbors, helping each other, sheltering in place, unless they feel they need to go to one of the shelters because it's dangerous. And we're going to be talking about the 20 shelters that we're going to be opening up to move our homeless folks into and other folks who need to shelter. But we need the full cooperation of all of the public, helping each other, really showing the aloha that we're all about. And we at the city and county of Honolulu need to do our job. We've been preparing for this. We'll be ready for this. And we'll be working on the recovery response mode should the worst occur. We're still hopeful that will not happen. But first on shelters, I'd like to ask Hiro Toyama, the uh, Deputy Director of Department of Emergency Management, to say a few words. Thank you, Hiro. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Hiro Toya with the City and County of Honolulu Department of Emergency Management. Um, as Mayor indicated, uh, we are taking the situation very seriously and we are preparing to open hurricane evacuation shelters tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. Uh, now, I have to uh, caveat this shelter list um, before I go into this. Um, we are going to be posting this on our website and making this available to the public. Um, we will have a list as well as a map of these shelter locations. Now, these shelters, um, most of them have not been designed or hardened to withstand winds greater than a tropical storm. Um, they are, however, a safer option uh, than remaining in areas prone to flooding um, or exposed ridgelines or in older homes with wood frames or single wall construction. So for Oahu, homes that were constructed uh, prior to 1995 or designed prior to 1994 and have not been retrofitted to withstand uh, storm force winds um, 
some of these folks may need to evacuate, uh, should consider evacuating to either uh, one of these shelters or consider also evacuating with friends and family who live in safer areas. Now these shelters are going to be very limited in space. Um, our planning factor is 10 square feet per person. Um, that is essentially standing room only and all the evacuees are expected to bring their own supplies. Um, so these shelters will have very limited supplies. Um, having said all that, we have been meeting with all of our partners, including the Department of Education, and all the city and county departments, as well as with the Hawaiian Humane Society to identify 20 shelter locations um, that will be open at 10 a.m. tomorrow. Um, and so I will go over this list. Um, and they're listed in order of uh, districts um, according to the Department of Education District. Um, first starting with Central Oahu, we have Aiea High School, Leilehua High School, Radford High School, Wailua High School and Intermediate. And going into Honolulu, into the town area, Dole Middle Kaimuki Middle School, Kaiser High School, Kalani High School, McKinley High School, and Stevenson Middle School. Going into Leeward, Oahu, Campbell High School, Kapole High School, Lehoku Elementary, I apologize, Lehoku Elementary, Nanakuli High and Intermediate, and Pearl City High School, and also Waipahu High School for Leeward. Looking at Windward, uh, we have uh, BYU Hawaii, Castle High School, and Waimanalo Elementary and Intermediate School. And again, these shelters are going to have very limited space and will not have supplies, and evacuees should plan on bringing all their essential supplies, including uh, clothing, hygiene items, food, and water to these shelter locations. Thank you. Thank you, Daryl. Really appreciate it. Um, so these shelters will be pet friendly. There are going to be requirements for the kind of pets, and they, they need to be if they need to be in a crate if they're dangerous. Um, if they're not dangerous, they may, may be allowed on a leash. We're going to be talking about that. But as part of this is how do we help those who don't have homes, those who live along the coast and under bridges? And I'd like Mark Alexander to talk about that just briefly. Where is Mark? Here. Okay. Hi, Mayor. Thanks. Thank you, Mayor. Mark Alexander, Executive Director, Office of Housing. Our outreach providers actually have started already reaching out to people as early as Monday, informing them of the impending hurricane and the need to seek shelter. In addition, uh, we've been communicating regularly with our homeless shelter providers, emergency and transitional, as well as all other support providers, keeping them updated with the information. Today at 1 p.m., we'll be having a conference call uh, with all of the homeless service providers to go over the current status of the hurricane, shelter, uh, evacuation shelter options, as well as transportation options. We worked uh, closely with Department of Transportation Services and the bus to ensure that we will have transportation for all those who wish to go uh, to an evacuation shelter. In addition, uh, we will make sure, especially during the time frame of, of Thursday between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., to concentrate our outreach efforts so that we can give everyone multiple opportunities to seek shelter. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. Right. Um, I'd like John Nowichi of the uh, Department of Transportation Services Deputy Director to talk about our bus service will be providing, but also the bus service will be providing to those who don't have homes and whether they can bring pets on. So, John. Aloha. John Nowichi, Deputy Director of the City's Department of Transportation Services. So, out of concern for the safety of, of you know, just the people in Honolulu, we are going to curtail our services at 6 p.m. on Thursday. So all trips starting beef up to 6 p.m. will operate to their completion, and Handy Van will parallel that. So all trips scheduled up until 6 p.m. will run. We will also be providing, um, with the assistance of Mark Alexander um, and DEM, evacuation shuttles to uh, provide transport for everyone to um, nearby shelters. So th those will operate on demand. The buses will be signed with evacuation. No fare will be required. 
people can, if they see one of these buses marked the evacuation, they can wave the bus down and the bus will stop to service them. Um, we will allow pets, but we do ask that people have their pets controlled, um, either leashed or in cages if possible, to help that make that safe for everyone, that their, their pet and interacting with other pets and other people on board the bus will remain safe for everyone. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, one thing that we are working on with the visitor industry, and we may have more to announce uh, at a later date, is making sure that those folks who wor work in Waikiki to take care of our visitors have an ability to get to work and perhaps home during this period of time because it's 36 hours of impact. And if the airport remains open, we also have workers that go out there, and there's been a request made that perhaps we have limited bus service provided to these two areas and to certain parts of our community to get people to and from work. We're looking at that. We're working on it. We want to try to see where we can accommodate, but we don't want to endanger both our bus drivers or those on the buses during the, during the major impact of this storm. Um, we're going to be working with the police department also who may have to help secure some of the roads and help guide access in and out of these places, both the airport and Waikiki. Um, I would like Lori Kahikina to talk a little bit about Opala Pickup. Lori? Lori Kahikina, Department of Environmental Services. As the mayor mentioned, tomorrow will be business as usual. All of the carts that you put out will be collected, including your bulky waste. But as of tomorrow night, please, especially your bulky and your carts, pull them back into your property and secure them so it's not flying around. Um, if the storm does hit, we, for the cleanup, the debris cleanup afterwards, if you could keep in mind, because I have your attention now, separate your trash into six different categories. Your regular home waste, your green waste, your white goods, your electronic goods, construction debris, and hazardous waste. We do have a flyer. We'll be putting it up on the city's website, including ours, opala.org, under the hurricane. So if you need reference to that, this is after the fact, though. And one thing, if I could please stress on the wastewater side, I do understand flooding is an issue, but please do not open your clean out caps. Do not open manholes to drain your yard in the, in the area because what that does is maybe it won't back up your home, but it'll back up your neighbor's home. And then it causes spills all the way along the system, including at the treatment plant. It is not designed to take that storm water. So please do not drain your rain gutters, anything storm water into the sewers. Thank you. Thank you, Lori. <coughs> Ernie Lau, who's the chief engineer of the Board of Water Supply, I'd like him to say a few words about, one, how much water. He has the best water in the world, uh, but also we're asking to conserve the water and not irrigate during this period of time. So, Ernie. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Ernie Lau, manager and chief engineer, Honolulu Board of Water Supply. Uh, yes, we're asking people to really reduce unnecessary water use right now. We need to actually help fill up our water tanks up on the hillsides, our water reservoirs. Uh, and people do need water. Uh, I know there's a lot of bottled water that's been sold out at a number of establishments. Uh, so there's another place you can get water, clean drinking water, and that's going right to your tap in your home. So get a clean container like this. Make sure it's, it's clean. And also there are instructions in the Hawaiian Electric uh, Handbook. This is a great resource on page 49. It tells you about sanitizing the water for drinking purposes. So there's a lot of water at pennies a gallon available right at your tap in your home without having to stand in line at the stores. Right now for Board of Water Supply, we have about seven large generators to power up our major pumping, some of our major pumping stations. Uh, our average demand is about 145 million gallons a day. Most of that depends on electricity to pump water from underground aquifers. So after a storm, it depends on the damage, and if power is out for most of this island, we won't be able to pump water as we normally do to everybody. So uh, with the se seven generators, we can produce probably about a 40 million gallons of drinking water from our, our wells. Uh, but that won't cover full use for about a million people on this island. So we ask people to conserve, use water wisely, and uh, budget for about a gallon per person per day for a 14-day period. So go to the tap, get a clean container, use a little bit of bleach without any dye or uh, coloring, and use that to disinfect it. Or you can boil the water. After the storm hits, depending on the amount of damage, we're automatically going to issue a boil water notice. We're going to ask people, even if the water is available through your tap, to, as a precaution, 
uh, boil that water or use some liquid bleach to disinfect the water before drinking. And the reason for that is we don't know what kind of damage occurred to our water sources or to our pipes in our system. Uh, so until we can mobilize to get our, our uh, uh, water quality people out there to test the water, we won't be able to tell you that it's uh, safe to drink right out of the tap. So as a precaution, if there is a major hurricane hit on Oahu, boil your water or treat it with uh, liquid bleach. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Really appreciate it. Like Carolee Kubo to come up and talk a little about our city workers, and I did want to clarify, if I didn't make it clear enough, that our workers who are not needing to come to work, it's for two days, Thursday and Friday, not just Thursday, Thursday and Friday. But Carolee, maybe you can expand on that, please. Carolee Kubo, Director of the Department of Human Resources. All employees have been designated either a response worker or a support worker. The directors of each department have the authority to determine their staffing. And if you are called to work, you must report to work. People who are determined not necessary to report Thursday and Friday will be placed on administrative leave. If you are on a day off, you will not be entitled to another time off due to the administrative leave. If you have applied for leave such as sick or vacation, you will remain on that status and you will not be entitled to additional time off in the, past, in the future. And if you're an hourly worker, you are not entitled to administrative leave. Thank you. Thank you, Carolee. A little bit more here. Michelle Nakota, you want to emphasize anything more about our parks? Okay, thank you. The mayor had talked about the Michelle Nakota from the Parks and Recreation Department. The mayor had talked about the 299 parks that we have. That also includes the botanical gardens as well as all of our camping sites and um, all of our, like, Cocoa Head shooting range as well, too. Thank you. Thanks, Michelle. Appreciate that. Um, the last group that I want to say a few words are our first responders. They're standing here behind us. They're the guys who are going to be out there in the midst of all this. They're going to be on the roads if necessary. I've asked them to shelter in place. They told me no. If they get a call, they're going. That makes me very proud. And I would like each of them to say a few words, starting with our Chief Ballard. Thank you, Chief. Thanks. Aloha. Uh, for the police department, we just ask the community just to please stay off the roads if possible. Um, and, you know, whether you're at your home or at a shelter, you know, just make sure that you're taking care of your family and, and, and your pets. The police department um, is being mobilized, so those who are not in patrol have already been put on standby status, so that they'll be switching. We'll be switching everybody to 12 hour days. Um, and then, like our, um, any of our non patrol units, we'll be supplementing our patrol units and we'll continue to respond to all cases for now. And depending upon the storm, uh, we may end up making a call that will only go to uh, priority one type calls, um, and which is basically those, you know, or em really emergency type calls. So we just ask um, to be patient, um, and our officers will be evaluating, uh, you know, response times, you know, on a, on a uh, you know, a day by day basis, considering whatever the storm's going to be. But we'll be out there and we'll respond to the calls as needed. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Well, the fire department. Which one do you want to go up? Uh, Scott, name, Scott said you're on Captain Honolulu Fire Department. Uh, we want to ask the public to please heed the warnings for the government officials. So uh, first responders will be out responding, doing our very best. But please heed the warnings that are out there. Uh, be prepared. And uh, if you're going to, if you need light during some kind of power outage, Please don't use a candle. We're asking you to use a flashlight. Uh, we have responded to fires during uh, blackouts as a result of candle use. Thank you. Thank you. Ian Santi. Uh, what? EMS. Oh, okay. <clears throat> come on up. Sorry. Chief Nakano for EMS. Um, anxiety is high already. Uh, our call volume has gone up. But as we we'll still respond to all calls as long as the weather conditions uh, permit. Thank you. Thank you. And then uh, Kevin Allen of Ocean Safety. I mean, we, we got to really stress the uh, impact that this hurricane will bring in terms of large surf and huge uh, movement of water and perhaps get out to that. Thank you. 
Yes, uh, <clears throat> Kevin Allen, Ocean Safety. Yeah, we're anticipating some really dangerous conditions. And so what we really want to do is just get the public to understand, you know, now is not the time just for a beach visit, not to go take a look at it. Stay safe, stay out of the water, stay off the beach. Um, our lifeguards, we're not going to be running our tower service because of the conditions. We will have lifeguards and mobile units, but that means it's going to take us longer to get there. So please, for their safety, for the public safety and for our employee safety, just stay out of the water, stay off the beaches throughout the storm. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Kevin. Uh, before we close, we'll open to questions. Anyone have anything else they want to say that we left out? There's so many things. If there is, please step up and add to it. I know Sherry wanted me to say all satellite city halls and driver's licensing facilities are closed, although she'd like to keep them open to catch up on the backlog, but they're closed. Um, Josh? Huh? From when? From starting tomorrow morning, yep. And Josh Stanbro's here. You know, he's our res chief resiliency officer, and this right now is all about resiliency, really. It's about us working together and dealing with a hurricane unlike almost any others. I think we've only had one other Category 5 hurricane pass, pass close by in 1994. I think Hurricane John is the second one. And I think he's telling me we've got to start living with these, these new realities because of climate change and the warming of in our environment, unfortunately. Um, I want to thank you for all being here. I really want to thank your viewers and your readers for paying attention. At the end of the day, it's, you're going to help yourself more than anyone else can. And as you can see, you're, you're being wrapped by the, our first responders to do the very best job over the next couple of days. You know, we don't think we'll see the real impacts until probably later tomorrow in the evening. And some may say, wow, people, no schools, no one going to work. You know, look, it's sunny and nice outside. And, and there will be some criticism to that. But I think we're getting ready. We're prepared. The shelters are open. People can move in because we do not want them moving at night. And we do not want our workers driving home in rush hour and being stuck on the road as we start to see those impacts. We're using a lot of caution here to be safe. And we're asking of all of you to be safe, too. So with that, we'll open up to any questions you may have. Thank you. Will the reopening of certain services, like city halls, where people themselves have to go to, be a set date or a pending a damage assessment? This weekend would have been the last of the yeah. Saturday extended out. Yeah. So it's a good question, Gina. I, you know, for sure, for the next two days, government is shut down. Offices are shut down unless they're essential. Um, in terms of when do we reopen? I mean, I'm hoping that the impacts are a lot less than what we're fearing right now, and we'll be back in business full on Monday. But should we sustain hurricane force winds and a more of a direct hit? We'll have to evaluate, you know, based on the damage to buildings and infrastructure and that kind of thing. So I think it's premature to say right now, but bottom line, we're going to work as hard as we can to get everything back up and running as quickly as we can. Can you explain again who should shelter in place and at what point should they go to one of those shelters? Okay. Hero, I'd like you to come up and emphasize it. It's a very good question, and, you know, we, as you've all reported, we have – we don't have enough shelters for the almost million people that live on this island. And to do that would be so prohibitive in terms of cost. Um, but many people have places they can go other than shelters. And Hero, if you could just help everyone understand that, because it's a difficult concept. Sure. Um, there are still uh, elements of forecast that are uncertain, such as the impact of storm surge. And that is one of our major concerns is if the storm is approaching uh, Oahu from the south shore with a direct hit, then we would have significant coastal inundation. Um, but we will need to continue to work with the Weather Service to um, get a better reading on what those storm has, uh, surge hazards are going to be. Um, but for now, um, we want folks who live in the coastal areas and flood-prone areas, um, folks who live in on the, uh, the ridge lines or in older homes with wood frames and single wall construction, um, and basically homes that were built prior to 1995 that have not otherwise been retrofitted, um, those folks may consider evacuation options. And, you know, it doesn't mean that they necessarily have to go to one of these public evacuation shelters. Um, talk to friends, family members, coworkers. Maybe there are safer options that they can go to. And again, these shelters, 
really have not been built or hardened to anything beyond uh, tropical storm conditions. And I believe the state has been transparent about this. Um, the space is also limited um, if we have a lot of evacuees. Um, and these shelters are also not stocked with supplies. So folks will have to bring their own supplies uh, when they evacuate to these shelters. So um, please, if at all possible, consider sheltering in place at your own home if it's safe to do so. Um, work with your friends, family, coworkers, identify other potential shelter options. And as a shelter of last resort, consider going to one of the public shelters that we announced. Other questions? Yeah, yeah. So Lynn. The bus at six o'clock tomorrow, you said they're going to stop running. Then do they become evacuation buses, and how will people know where to even find these buses? Okay. So, John, if you could answer that question, and then, Mark, I don't know if you're going to add to, on the ho homeless side, but maybe John can answer that. John. Sure. So, um, tomorrow we will be operating our regular weekday schedule. But all the trips up until 6 p.m., so that's the trips from their starting point that are scheduled before 6 p.m., will run as usual. So a bus leaving Waikiki at 6 p.m. will, say a 42, will travel its whole route to Eva Beach. So we will not curtail the service at 6 p.m., but however, trips starting after 6 p.m. will be canceled. Um, we have enough fleet to accommodate in the morning period to begin the evacuation procedures for the more sensitive members of our community. Um, at that point, we will rely on DEM to help us dispatch those and working with Mark Alexander's office to um, bring the buses to the point where they are necessary. Um, as we get closer to the storm period, as we know a little bit more about some, maybe some of the weather effects, DEM will help us dispatch those buses to areas that need them the most. So the important thing for people to remember is that they will be signed the evacuation. No fare is required. We ask that people only bring what they can carry, and pets are allowed. Can you tell us a little bit more on the pet issue? People might have to shelter in terms of the, uh, they can take the shelter. Also, where the city is responsible for animal rescue, control, and care, such as at the zoo. Let me uh, real quickly, however, emphasize two things. Number one, in terms of those vulnerable citizens of our community, our homeless community, we will have some buses set up very early on, like I said, between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m. to go to various shelters and other specified locations by the providers that we can transport people from those locations to the evacuation centers. In addition, as John said, uh, the bus service is going to be very flexible. As we identify other areas of need, we will be able to send buses specific to those areas to address people's transportation needs. Okay. So, uh, Gina, I thought uh, on terms of pets, in, at each of the 20 shelters, we will ha have someone I've been told from the Humane Society there also to help with the pets. Um, I don't know if that answers part of your question. You asked about the zoo. You know, the zoo will be closed, um, but people will be at the zoo. There will be keepers. Those, are, those people who need to be there, right, Donna, will be there making sure the animals are secure and taken care of. Um, their, their safety is important also. Roughly how uh, much of the city employees, staff, is going to be on duty tomorrow? You know, Gordon, it's a hard, that's a good question. It's hard to answer because it's up to each of the directors to decide who who needs to work and who doesn't need to come to work. But you know, on a rough, I I look at it as an eighty twenty split. If you want kind of rough, rough numbers, it's probably something like that. If anyone thinks I'm wrong, you can speak up. But that's what I think it probably is, given my past experience. So if you're a disaster response worker, you're critical. You got to come to work, no matter what. If you're a disaster support worker wait for a call and your directors will be telling you that and you'll know that and tomorrow you either come to work or you don't based on that and th and Friday also you either come to work or not based on that okay any other questions question. you mentioned Puerto Rico and obviously hoping that that doesn't happen here they went without power for months and months is that one of your biggest concerns that perhaps our grid will go down or people will be without power for months or weeks on end well one is power is always a concern and you heard um ernie lau talk about it in terms of making sure our reservoirs are filled with water 
Um, I, I would think that we're much different than Puerto Rico in terms of our infrastructure and facilities. We, we just, I think, are much more up to date, and we have a, a good utility company. But, you know, depending on the force of the winds and enough lines go down, you saw what happened with the Nike. I mean, you couldn't drive down any road. Telephone and power lines laid out across the entire road, and it took a long time to get power back up. So, yeah, it is a concern, and that's why we're talking to the community. They need to be ready. We need to be ready. Um, but I'm also very hopeful we have the resources here. Unlike Puerto Rico, you know, we, we have the Indo-Pacific Command in our backyard. And in, in a real time of need, we'll be reaching out to them to help us too. And they have, they have incredible assets they can provide. Okay. As of, as of today, in your best assessment, are the major waterway streams and drains uh, cleared as far as you know? Yeah. You know, we've done, we've went to the critical streams and cleared them. But, you know, the concern here is what's above where we clear because we don't, have access to streams to the back of valleys. We have access to streams where our city roads go and getting in there and going so far up. But when you get into the private property and streams, we don't go in there. And so any debris that falls into those streams um, get cleaned out with major rain events. So yeah, it is still a concern. When we had the problems in Kalihi for, what was that, Ezel, Darby? Darby, remember our, even our handy vans got flooded out because the bridge got blocked by a lot of debris. Now, some of it was thrown in there intentionally, which we've really tried to crack down on. And that's why, again, we want your viewers to call if they see that kind of activity, the 768 city. Um, but part of it's just nature's way of flushing out stuff out of streams and other areas. So we've done a, as much as we can, but it is a concern. And that's why folks who have lived in areas that have flooded repeatedly, like out on East Honolulu just recently, they should be ready to leave for shelter or go to other places. And they should move things to higher ground so they don't have damage the second time in very close quarters. Mayor, beyond just um, clearing these streams, are there any other steps that the city can take or has taken in terms of mitigating the effects yeah. of flooding? Now, and that's been asked in some of these streams where the flooding was worst is down at the sea level. So you have um, streams that are only so wide and no matter how deep you dig them, there's salt water that comes into them, right? They're full of water all the time. And if you get a higher tide, and by the way, during this event, we're going to see higher tides. So you have storm surge, you have high tides, you have a lot of water coming down. It's nowhere to go. So it goes out instead of down. That's what happened back in March, unfortunately. And homeowners asked me, Mayor, you need to do something with this stream. And I said, well, we, if you make it deeper, it doesn't mean more water flows because there's water in it already from the ocean. But we could make it wider, but your home gets condemned. And at the end of the day, I, I think people need to change how they live by water, whether it be on the coast or along streams. And you see examples of that. The best examples, I think, are out in, out in Hanalei, going to, out to Haena. Many new homes under the code are built off ground. And those homes that were built off ground when the floods that we saw in March hit here, hit there, those homes survived. The ones built at grade were the ones that were washed away. And I do think under the mayor's directive that I issued because of climate change, we're going to be looking at our building codes and probably requiring different types of buildings in the future, including in areas that are already built. As they rebuild, they're going to have to build higher off the ground. Is there any potential for, and I understand what you're yeah. talking about, making it wider, yeah. making it deeper, the constraints there. But as far as, as creating some sort of like relief uh, outlets or, or ditching and things like that, and those things so there is. I mean, we talk. Those are you may be talking about debris basins, and we have looked at those. We are you know for the the major flood in 2004 in Manoa, there is a proposal to create seven or eight debris basins up in Pololo Valley, Makiki, and Manoa Valley, and those are things that we're going to be looking at. I think they're valuable things to to do. We have already in place certain areas where water can run to flood some of our parks on purpose, so the water rise, but um, it's not enough. And I think the type of rain events we're seeing are just so different from what we've seen historically that no stream can handle the volume of water. When you get 50 inches of rain out in Hanalei in a 24-hour period, the most in the history of recording rainfall, no, no amount of what you build is going to handle that, um, unfortunately. Of wastewater and sanitation, are there any ongoing uh, construction projects or major operations or bypasses that we have to yeah. make sure all pumps are, are working and are they on, on? I think you were in our cabinet meeting yesterday. I ask that to Lori all the time. Lori's standing right here. She's going to answer that question, but we've learned some valuable lessons, right? We plug pukas. 
Yes. We have people standing by at pump stations now, right, to yes. turn off pumps or turn them on, depending on where your necks are. Okay. Thank you for bringing up that point. <laughs> making me relive that okay so gina for a sand island treatment plant that was a major flood um we had a puka in one of our clarifiers and it flooded the entire treatment plant so there, that project is still ongoing we have eight clarifiers out there one three five seven and eight are operational two four and six are available to fill it up but again if i could just stress to the viewers whatever you're flushing on that toilet or draining the stormwater, it's going to go to those plants. So, for example, sand island is usually about 67 million gallons per day of treating wastewater. When that storm hits, and it's not even hurricane level, it jumps up to 250. That's rainwater coming in four times the flow. We cannot handle that. So, even if I have all eight ready, kind of flow. So, as Ernie said, conserve water. Don't don't wash your dishes if you can with a dishwasher. Don't wash your clothes. I mean, don't flush your toilet unless you have to. You can pee several times in the toilet before you, before you flush. But uh, <laughs> or outside. Oh, I didn't say that. <laughs> um, we do have major construction projects going all over the place. West Beach, that emergency is going on. Recently, the pumps failed. Those have been checked. Uwalu temporary bypass has been checked. The KK tunnel is in full operation, so that'll give some relief to the windward side. Um, all of our pump stations, we have 70 pump stations. All of the pumps have been checked. If there are those that are down, portable pumps have already been moved there, and our generators are already fueled up, ready to go. Well, thanks for that. But uh, Gina, as Lori said, if we get if we get 15, 20 inches of rain, we will have spills. As hard as I have saying that, we're going to be honest about it, and we will be ready, and hopefully it'll be not major. Okay? Other questions? Otherwise, what I'll do is I'll ask all the guys here to stay. So if you want to talk to them individually, have follow-up questions, um, we'd be more than happy to answer them. So if everyone could stay for a little bit. I know some of you may have to run off. I want to thank the chief for being here. Um, and we may be doing more of these as we learn more information and share it with you. You're our way to get everything out to the public so they can be protected. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we did uh, announce that the public schools and the University of Hawaii campuses on Oahu and Kauai will be closed on Thursday and Friday as well. Um, you know, we just want to remind people to be safe, um, and schools are important emergency shelters uh, in our preparedness planning, and so we do want to have them available. Uh, should we have a need to uh, open shelters uh, as the storm progresses. I just really wanted to commend the Department of Transportation crews at the, the state and county of Ono, uh, all the counties all across the islands. You know, they've been working very hard to keep uh, roads clear, uh, remove debris, anticipate um, any work that they can do ahead of the storm's arrival. They've been working very hard to clear drainage canals and, and other uh, debris that might be uh, 